Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry and Plurk. Today is Tuesday, January 15th. This is episode 10, Home Sweet Home. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Oh, I'm going to sound really, really attractive today because I am stuffed up right here. Like, directly behind there stuffed up. So, sorry if I'm difficult to understand, or if I sound kind of mannish, because I sound kind of mannish in my head. Um, anyway, I am home. Michigan trip was awesome! It was really, really good to see my family and some friends. I didn't see everybody who I wanted to see, but I never do, because I just have so many people in Michigan, and even five days is not enough, but it's a lot better than, you know, three days, which is what it normally is. We usually leave some time on Friday, and then leave some time on Sunday, and this time I got to see my sister and her kids, and both of my parents and their significant others, and my best friend Mary Lee, and I went to the movies one night, saw Les Mis with my sister and a friend and a boyfriend, so that was really, really fun. Uh, I don't usually get to go out to the movies because babies and no babysitters, but my mom actually watched the kids so we could go to the movies, and then she watched the kids the next day so I could go um, over to my best friend's house and have, like, crafty time with her for... Um, we only hung out for a couple hours, which really, really sucked, but she worked and had an eye appointment, and um, we had to schedule it in for her really busy schedule, because she has a crazy busy schedule. But it was good. I'll uh, talk about that and later. Um, I also saw Becca, my ex-girlfriend, best friend person. I saw her sister and her husband and their best friend. So that was really exciting. We went out to breakfast. So today I am recording from the couch partially because um, the lighting is crap everywhere. So here is just as not great lighting as over in my dining room, which was that way. Um, partially because of that, and mostly because my dining room table is covered with the stuff from our trip, and Gabriel will probably make an appearance. I can hear him. Can you? Um, we unloaded the all the stuff onto the dining room table, and I have been slowly putting things... Um, Putting things away, but very slowly because it was a whirlwind, whirlwind trip, and I just I'm tired from my my vacation sort of thing. You know how that goes. You go on vacation, and then when you get back, sometimes you're just so much more tired than you were before you left. But it's a good tired. So today, if Gabriel makes an appearance. He will be in his pajamas because I have decided that it is pajama day. I'm wearing a pajama e shirt. I'm wearing jeans because I have to go outside and it's too cold for pajamas outside. I will, uh, I'll probably be changing into my pajama pants here not in too long and it's only it's between two and three. Um, I'm not sure how much past two it is because I took Mara up to put her down for a nap a little after two and guess what? She is actually taking a nap today. Yay! So, that's really exciting. Um, it's because she's sick. Wednesday, when we were leaving, she screamed probably half of the day because I was getting everything ready um, to go. You know, last minute packing. Most of the vehicle was packed, but there was still like the last minute things and last minute cleaning because I have two small kids, so cleaning is never done. Um, but I wanted to come back to as clean of a home as possible. So I was doing a lot of running around and she wasn't feeling well and she just wanted to be held but I just couldn't hold her. She would stop screaming 
when I held her, so whenever I took a break from cleaning or, you know, cooking, whatever, I would pick her up, but as soon as I set her down, she would start screaming again. She has a really achy cold. She is a, a faucet. Honestly, her nose is a faucet. She looks like she skinned her face because she keeps rubbing her arm across her face like that. Um, she won't let me blow her nose. She just wipes it so it gets on her face and then she keeps wiping it and um, lint gets on her face so her nose has been like blue and black the past couple days because those were the color shirts she was wearing and uh, she's she seems better today and I think that's why she's napping is because she's sick is what all that I had to go on to so uh, congratulations on getting a little too much information there you go um, I feel all over the place. Sorry. It's because of my cold. Colds make it harder to think things through. Actually, that's probably a lie. I just, uh, I have a really hard time staying focused on things, which is why when I have conversations with people, we talk about ten things at once so that we just jump around from subject to subject. So, let's get into what you're here for. Knitting content. This month and into next month, I am hosting a knit slash spin slash crochet slash weave along. Um, anything that's RAV sanctioned, any project, you can finish and enter into this. The stipulation is that the, the finished object must be for yourself. It has to be something you are making for yourself, not for anybody else because it's time to do a little selfish knitting. Um, tag your projects with B-P-H-S-E-L-F for Bunnyfish Selfish. And the deadline is February 18th, 2013. Sorry, I had to, I started talking about this later in the podcast and I had to edit it and jump it in right after I talked about the um, selfish craft along. I'm really excited that people have actually started posting in the chatter thread. I love seeing what people are working on for themselves. That's really exciting for me. I hope that other people join in on the chatter, and if not, there are already three people who are talking about making things for themselves, and I think that is fantastic. I can't wait to see what everybody puts up in the finished objects thread. Thank you for joining in, and um, I just want to put this out there that if you're not on Ravelry, but you watch my podcast and you make something for yourself this month, um, contact me through the blog and I'll give you my email address. I will post your picture for you in the thread so you can also be um, entered to win the prize. I... I'm thinking about the prize, and um, I'm not exactly sure that this is what I want to do. Well, actually, this is really what I want to do, but it depends on what you, the viewers, think. Go to the thread for this episode, or comment on the blog, and let me know what you think about this as a prize for this craft along. I want to knit the winner a pair of socks. I have um, a few skeins of sock yarn that are not earmarked for anything, so I will bring them to the podcast next week if people say that they're interested in this, and I will show them on the podcast so people can get an idea of what they look like, and I'll take a picture in good lighting so you can actually see. But I would, as a prize, I would like to knit you a pair of socks. There you go. Um, is that something you guys would be interested in, me knitting you a pair of socks? I usually, it usually takes me, uh, less than a month to knit a pair of socks. I usually work on two or three at a time so that I don't get bored. So, uh, yeah, less than a month. If that is something you are interested in, please let me know, or if you think that that is a horrible idea and you'd rather just get yarn or a pattern or, you know, some other thing instead of me knitting you a pair of socks, let me know that too. I want to know what people are interested in. 
Um, I might actually ask about it in the chatter thread, so I guess you could throw your answer in the chatter thread instead of the episode thread, but either way, just let me know. You can send me a PM, whatever. Let me know what you think about me knitting socks for the winter. I don't just have girl colors, I also have boy colors in my stash. So um, if you are a guy and you're watching and you're thinking of making something for yourself and you're like, oh, I can't even win that prize, well, you can. I have guy colored yarn. So um, yeah, let me know what you think about that. Okay, sorry for taking the break. I wanted to show you what I was making because I actually have the book that it's out of. It's from the library. I don't own it. Someday I would really, really like to own it, but today is not that day. Anyway, I forgot it downstairs. So here you go. This is what I'm making for Kai Mei socks by Cookie A out of Sock Innovation. Also, I'm sorry that my camera is tilted. The tripod and I, we're just not working together today. I fiddled with it for like five minutes and it's just it's not working. But anyway, I didn't take my socks with me on my Michigan trip because I really wanted to get those other projects completed. So there's nothing more to show you this week. It looks exactly the same as it did last week. Maybe I did one more round, but I doubt it. So I'm not going to even show you. I will show you the yarn though. This is Plymouth Happy Feet in the color one. And I love it. And I'm making my socks on US size 2, 2.75 millimeter, which means I cast on less because um, the pattern calls for US ones. So less stitches, bigger needles. Next week, I should have some progress on that because I'm getting very close to being done with all of the things that I wanted to finish in January. So, finished objects. I will be putting in pictures for the first... no, for all of them. All of them will be pictures only. Um, so, the first thing that I finished was socks for Kenny. Um, I was using the slide pattern by Cookie A. Peyton's Croy Socks Rag Shades in the colorway gray-brown marl, U.S. size 2, 2.75 millimeters. He really liked his socks. He wore them the entire day. Um, I actually made everybody take off the socks that they were wearing and put on their Christmas socks. Gabriel immediately took his Christmas socks off and changed back into the socks he had been wearing that day. Um, not because he didn't like them, just because, I don't know, he just wanted to wear the socks that he was wearing in the first place. I took the picture and he changed back, but Kenny kept those socks on all day, so that was really exciting. And Cecilia, by the way, thought that her yarn socks were very cool, and she wore them um, off and on. She doesn't really wear socks, so, you know, the fact that she would put them on when her feet got cold was a compliment. Um, so yes, Kenny's socks picture here. Um, I finished Melissa's socks. Uh, um, I made up the design for those. I used um, Knit Picks Stroll in the colorway black for the heels, toes, and the cuff. And I used Science Monkey Mercantile Faraday in the colorway NSO November for the legs. I have uh, about 20 grams left over, which is good because I was worried I was going to run out, so now I know in the future that I probably won't, but I'm still glad that I did the toes, heels, and cuffs in black because it turned out really, really cool looking, and I'll show you a picture here. Yesterday, I finished the Cthulhu, the green Cthulhu that I was commissioned, that I was using a modified pattern for. Um, I used Karen One Pound Forest Floor and a USD, which is 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. And um, 
it's packaged and on its ready to go to the post office. I just have to take it. I didn't feel like running errands today because we did a lot of running around over the weekend. So it will go out tomorrow, but it's all packaged up and I will put a picture here. That is everything that I finished. I had less crafting time than normal because, you know, I was hanging out with kids and stuff and I did driving. Yes, I drove while we were in Michigan a few times. Not quite half of the time, but you know, driving scares me, honestly. Tin cans curling through space at, you know, between 45 and 75 miles per hour, depending on the street, that is terrifying to me. I don't like driving. There's a reason why I didn't get my license until I was 26. Not because I'm a bad driver, I'm a good driver, actually. Um, and I would prefer not to drive, ever. <laughs> That's not going to happen, but I decided not to run errands today because there was a lot of driving and a lot of out, and I just don't feel like it today. We have to go grocery shopping this evening because, you know, before we left we, um, we didn't want perishables sitting in our fridge. Even though it was only five days, I still didn't want perishables in the fridge for five days. So we have to get a lot of the basics tonight. But that's tonight and I don't have to think about that for a while. So now I'm rambling. Let's get back to works in progress. I'm going to shift on my couch. And totally mess up the camera. That's cool. Okay, I worked on Amanda socks yesterday. They were my, um, I worked on two things in the car yesterday on the trip home, and those were one of them, but I only got through a pattern or repeat, so I'm still not going to show them to you. And I'm not going to give you all the blah blah blah. You can wait until you see them. Um, I worked on some spinning this morning. This is as much as I got done. This is some art yarn for Mary Lee. Mm, there. And I'm using my hand spun. That stuff that I wanted to finish before I left, I actually ended up using for her. So hand spun a strand of commercial yarn that she got at the thrift store. It's a bright purpley color. And um, I'm alternating that with a another strand of hand spun that I'm spinning up as I need it. And um, the, the third strand is alternating between the hand spun and between thread with beads on it. I think you can actually see the beads over here. Gabriel helped me string those. He thought that was really, really exciting. Um, I actually finished a skein of that while I was in Michigan. When I went over to Mary Lee's house, we hung out and I did the spinning and she strung beads onto string and we made a skein of um, about 30, a little over 30 yards of yarn. She sent me home with the rest of the um, supplies. make more yarn, and that is what I'll be doing in the next few days. I need to get it done before this weekend so I can give Lorraine back her spindles. I didn't want to work at, on it at my mom's house because my mom and her boyfriend are heavy smokers. That's where I was staying, by the way, was at my mom's house. I didn't want to get that smell in Lorraine's spindles, so I just left them out in the car. Um, I worked on the Valentine's shawl, which I am now calling Valentine in the dark because I worked on this completely in the dark. Everything that you see done that wasn't done last time you saw it was done in the dark. I took it into the movie theater with me. Yes, baby. Hey, lunches. Not right now. Downstairs, please. Um, I took it into the movie theater, and that's what I worked on through Les Mis, and um, 
after it got dark on our drive to Michigan, I put away Melissa socks because that's what I started the trip with and pulled out this and worked on this in the dark. So yes, Valentine's in the dark. I'm using US size H 5.0 millimeter hook. Um, it's the Ozark Morning Shawl by Mary Acock. And, excuse me, this is the yarn dyed by Lorraine. The reason why I haven't worked on it since I got home is because I am still winding the yarn into a ball, the next thing of yarn. I don't have a ball winder or a swift, so I usually use a chair or my knees to hold the yarn, and I use a, um, a wire whisk, I use the handle of that for the center of my center pole ball. And I gotta tell you, the ball for this worked out really, really nice. There was no yarn barf, which there shouldn't be when you wind your own balls, but I know some people have that problem sometimes. But yeah, it, um, it works really well. It just takes a very, very long time to do. I think I watched um, an entire episode of a podcast this morning, winding the ball, and it's pretty small still. It's like that big. So hopefully next week this will be finished, or um, the body should be finished at the very least, and the border started because across the top, um, I'm pretty sure I have 21 of these on this row, and I need to get to 25 across the top. I'm in the middle of the pattern because it's a two row pattern. So I'm getting close to the body being done, and then I have to do the edging and block the daylights out of it because this lace pattern super opens up when you block it, so that should be exciting. And I'd like to have it done, um, not by next podcast, but by the end of next week. So two podcasts from now it should be done, but you know, next week Friday is what I'm shooting for as soon as I get that ball wound. What else am I working on? Oh, I forgot it over there. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm back. Um, my other project for in the car ride yesterday was a pet bed. It's just a square, you know, kind of a single crochet granny square without any holes in it. Um, I'm not using a pattern, I'm just going with it. I'm making it out of Karen One Pound Remnants. My mom gave me this, see that big box? Um, it is full of yarn, and I will actually put in a picture of the yarn here. It's got all sorts of stuff. Some things that will look really, really nice as scarves and cowls, and um, there's some like really fine, it looks like chenille, but it might not be, but it's like really fine, and that might be a really, really lovely shawl. I kind I need to figure out how much I have so I can, you know, a shawlette or a scarf or a cowl or something, but it's really, really pretty. But in it, there is remnants of Karen One Pound. And this is literally what was left of the skein. This is what was left. This skein was actually broken into two parts, so this is the first part. I'm going to add on with this. Um, th see, this is the other part. There's I have this little bit, which I might not actually use in this pet bed, but I'm planning on making a couple. And um, there's also like a pink and another blue-green of Karen One Pound from that box from my mom. And then I have some Karen One Pound that I can use. But I am making this for, um, I believe, I believe that Sadie of Yarnivore is hosting a um, craft along for the Snuggles project. I believe that's who it is. I haven't started watching the Yarnivore podcast, but it is on my list, and it might be the next one that I watch after I finish the 
um, the podcast that I'm watching right now. I only have a couple more episodes, so I'm probably going to finish those today while I'm being a bum. But I believe that she is hosting a crochet along for um, pet beds that runs through the end of February, so I am planning on making a few. I want to make one for every podcaster whose show that I watch so that um, this these projects can only be entered in, every single one can be entered in um, the Yarnivore um, project thread crochet along um, finished objects thread, yes, that. <laughs> Sorry. And then they can also be entered into one other podcaster's thread. And at least two of the podcasters that I follow are having crochet alongs or, you know, knit sewing crochet alongs for these. So at least two of the ones I watch. So I'm going to be making at least two, but I want to do one for every podcaster who I watch. Um, so at least two, but there might be a third one who's doing it. I can't remember. Okay, so on to new things. I have a lot, but I didn't buy most of it. Um, a lot of it is in that box, but I'll be showing you that picture. Well, I think I already showed you that picture in the podcast. Excuse me for a second. Um, I... Whenever I go to my mom's, she sends me home with stuff that she isn't going to use anymore. You know, she always throws in a little bit of food. She bought um, cinnamon raisin bread for the kids, so she threw that in the bag of groceries that we had brought up and had some food left over, so she threw that in. We took home some leftovers from dinners that had been made. And she was like, oh, go in my yarn closet and go ahead and have whatever you want. Most of that yarn in that box was sent to my mom from my mom's boyfriend's mom. Mom's boyfriend's mom, yes. And she isn't going to use it because my mom is the type of crafter who goes and buys what she needs for a project and that is it. After the project is done, she doesn't use the leftovers. They just sit there she doesn't just buy yarn because, oh, that's pretty. She only buys what she needs for the project. So she got that yarn and um, didn't do anything with it. So I am taking it and making pet beds and whatever else I make with the yarn in there. Uh, the reason it's in the box still, instead of filtering its way into my yarn stash, is because of the smoking factor. I don't want that smell in with my yarn. So, that box is going to sit, stay separate, and I will tell you when I use yarn from my mom. I am about to be invaded. While I was in Michigan, I went to Joann's to get yarn for my sister's sweater. I really wanted to visit some local yarn stores while we were out. What did I just say? I don't even know. Some local yarn stores. Did I say that? Because that's not what I heard in my head. But we just, we had so much running around that we didn't want to add one more thing to the list. So. I ended up going to Joann's and buying yarn, which I'm carrying in a Kroger bag. This is what they give you when you buy alcohol at Kroger, like wines and stuff. It was in the bag with the yarn from my mom. Um, it doesn't matter if my sister's stuff smells like cigarette smokes, because she smokes. I got two skeins each of the Karen Simply Soft in a gray heather and black, and that should be enough mm -hmm. to make the $5 in Paris sweater. I probably won't be starting that until February because I have so much that I want to get done in January. Um, 
but I will be baking that as part of the sweater knit along for knitables podcast and the cutoff date for that is February 27th so I'm going to be trying to make a sweater in less than a month and I'm going to try to fit it into Nerd Wars because it'll be made in less than a month so wish me luck and I'm going to do it because uh-huh. I'm going to need it for Nerd Wars. <laughs> While we were at Joanne's, I had a moment of stash enhancement without purpose. Um, All of their yarns were 25% off, and I just happened to go down the sock yarn aisle. I wasn't even going to go. I really wasn't. But I couldn't find the Simply Soft because it was hiding. And I walked down the sock aisle, sock yarn aisle, and I saw Serenity Sock Weight in Colorway Harlequin. It is green and purple with a little bit of yellow. I have a thing for green and purple. So I bought it. So... By the way, this yarn isn't earmarked. So if we decide that I'm knitting people socks, you could possibly get socks knit out of this. I really, 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 really like the colors in this yarn, but I will give it up if that's what people want and someone wins and they want this colorway. So yeah, that was my moment of downfall, and um, I don't regret it because they're gorgeous. I just can't knit that for myself because I want to do 25 pairs of socks out of my stash and that doesn't count as my stash, but you can still win it if that's how we decide to go. But that's not bad. I only bought enough for one pair of socks when I was facing sock yarn on sale. And there were definitely more colorways that I was like, yes! Because their sock yarn selection is way better than my Joann's sock yarn selection. And even my, um, my local yarn stores, their sock yarn selections are obviously more indie dyer. And, um, they're just not, there's not a lot. They don't carry a lot at the one that I go to. So, yeah, I saw it. It's really pretty. Do I need it for myself? No. Do I want it for my blanket? Yes. <laughs> That's why I picked it up. Um, on to what I am reading. I finished Elixir by Hilary Duff. It didn't. It didn't get better. I mean, the story was okay, but the ending was kind of crap. I realized that they were probably trying to leave it open for like a sequel sort of thing, but it was really just crap. I was like, really? I turned the page at the end of the book and I was like, that's how you're going to end it? Because it was seriously in the middle of the story. I understand people want you to be interested in what they're reading, but there was no resolution. So, yeah. I recommend not reading that book. It was okay. It wasn't great. I don't think it was worth the time I put into it. I am still listening to Sword of Avalon. I actually listened to Disc 2 today while I was spinning and cleaning a little bit. Um, I'll probably listen to disc three this evening. I like to do about two discs a day. They're about an hour a piece. So it's really good. Still don't know the characters. I mean, I know them now. I know who the characters are on now. I'm two discs into it. But there's nobody I recognize from the stories, which isn't a bad thing. Um, I still really like it. And I started all wound up by Stephanie Pearl McPhee, and it's a collection of essays about, well, not even about knitting, but with yarn-related things. They're really funny. Um, she writes, let's see, I'm actually going to go to the table of contents and tell you what's up. She writes um, an ode to her washer, a love story in three parts, which is really, really funny, and about 
how important a good reliable washing machine is and how um, how much she missed it once it was gone and how much her new washing machine isn't great. Um, there's Oh, Personal Filters is hilarious. It's an essay about, um, the list is titled, Things That Non-Knitters Say To Me and What I Would Like To Say Back, But Never Will Because I Am A Good Person. The last, sh she has it set up with, um, scene, what I would like to say, and then what I actually said. And, uh, the last scene, I just had to go to bed after I read it because I was like, there's nothing in this book that will be better than that, so I'm just gonna let it sit for tomorrow. And, um, for that night, I was correct. There are other things in this book, though, that are better than the thing on page 40. So definitely read past page 40. I'm not saying to stop at page 40 because this book is funny. So funny. I can relate to a lot of it because I craft and I have kids and I have to deal with other people sometimes. <laughs> this book is awesome. Uh, I'm just going to read you this scene, so spoiler alert, and uh, also hopefully I'm not getting in trouble for reading you this little bit of a paragraph, this excerpt. So. Scene. I'm knitting, as I usually am, and I am approached by a non-knitter who points out that every time she sees me, I'm knitting. You knit a lot, she observes. What comes out of her mouth next is the only thing a non-knitter has ever said to me that has effectively silenced not just my actual voice, but my inner one as well. You must have a lot of time on your hands. You should think about getting a hobby. to her, to Stephanie Pearl McVie. Um, yarn harlot or not, who cares that someone said that? Are you kidding? You need to get a hobby? Yeah, that was so great that I had my mom read it, and um, I had my boyfriend read it, and yeah, that is hilarious. And it is that kind of humor that you can look forward to when you read All Wound Up. If you can't purchase it, go to the library like I did, because I can't purchase all the books that I want. I can't even purchase most of the books that I want. And um, I'm pretty far through it. See my bookmark right there? Probably going to finish it today because it is fantastic. And then I'm going to read, excuse me while I get up again, I'm totally not prepared today. Sorry. I'm all over, over the place. Um, I made the mistake of, this is another library book with a really cool cover that's actually 3D. Can you see that? This sticks out. It's not flat. I picked it up because Becca was like, oh, what's that? That looks kind of cool. And it's got some, it's got some, that's not helpful for you. Some illustrations and stuff in it, but it's mostly words. I made the mistake on, a. Uh, Tuesday last week. I got up in the middle of the night with Mara and I picked up this book and started reading it. The girl in the first chapter, her name is Heather, and um, this, I don't remember his name. This guy, yeah, that guy. I don't remember his name, but uh, I guess he kidnaps adolescents and tortures them and then writes a story that they all read called Malice. I don't know, I'm only one chapter in, but the girl's name is Heather and bad things happened and I couldn't go back to sleep. So instead I went downstairs um, to my computer in the basement and watched a podcast until I felt normal enough to uh, not be afraid of, too afraid of the dark. P.S. I'm afraid of the dark. Just am. There are scary things in the dark. There are monsters. You can try to uh, be rational about it. I am totally rational about it when it's daylight out, but as soon as it gets dark out, yeah, can't do anything about it. And it goes dark 
in the house in that story in the first chapter the, all the lights go out yeah I was uh, I was done so that's definitely going to be a read only when it's light outside type book um, luckily I have a book from the library that I can put on my bedside table so I don't have to worry about that anyway on to three favorite things and this week's three favorite things is about being home. Being home after vacation is a really, really nice thing because number one, my bed is really, really comfortable. Some people do not have comfortable beds, but I do. It's a little bit soft for my taste, but it also has the appropriate number of pillows and the sheets and blankets that I like. And I'm not saying that the setup in my mom's guest room is bad. It's just not what I prefer. Um, it's comfortable. It's good. It's just not my bed. I also cannot express how grateful I am that my house is baby proof to a degree. When Mara picks things up, I don't have to freak out immediately that she's going to drop them. Because you know what happened when we were at my mom's place? She picked up a candle holder. And then she picked up a second candle holder. And they were ceramic or porcelain or something. And she went to pick up a third one and they're like this big. Mara's too. This big, this big is a lot for her to hold, especially in one hand and one arm because she was reaching for the third. So she went to reach for the third one. I was halfway across the room. I was almost to her. And I was like, Mara, no, put it down. And the first one that she had in the crook of her arm and her elbow slipped, hit the ground, and shattered totally unprepared today. Didn't clear off my SD card, so it was card full, and now I forget where I was in my story. So I'm probably going to cut most of that and just leave you with, I am so thankful that my house is baby proof. So whenever Mara picks something up, I don't have to be like, no, Mara, put it down. And freak out. And um, the third thing is I am really, really thankful to be back on my own schedule. Um, I don't have to worry about the fact that sometimes Mara wakes up ridiculously early before everybody else. I don't have to worry about Gabriel waking up before Grandpa Brian, who sleeps on the couch because he likes it. And Okay, put all the cars in the bag and going, he one morning he got in Brian's face and he's like, Grandpa, wake up! And I was like, no! Leave him sleeping! Let's not... Let's not... He... Ugh. So, I don't have to worry about that. Um, it's easy to put the kids to sleep when they're supposed to go to sleep. It's easy to put them down for naps when they're supposed to go down for naps. I eat dinner when, you know, on our normal dinner time instead of crazy dinner time. We eat lunch here. My mom and her boyfriend don't eat lunch, so that was kind of interesting trying to figure out when to have lunch. Mm, I love you.